In this video tutorial, we're going to be evaluating the stresses in the wall of a pressure vessel. So when we pressurize the vessel, we're going to get stresses on the wall of the cylinder as a result. Now we're going to evaluate two different theories over the next two video tutorials. In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at thin walled cylinders. And in the next video tutorial, we're going to be looking at thick walled cylinders. We're going to use the same pressure and cylinder for each of these calculations in order to compare the answers with the two different methods. So on the screen here, we have two different formulas relating to our cylinder. The first formula is for something called the longitudinal stress. Now the longitudinal stress, if we refer to our diagram, is going to separate or aim to separate our cylinder in this direction. We can calculate that stress by doing the pressure in pascals times the mean diameter over four times the wall thickness. Now there is another stress, and this stress is called the circumferential stress. Now the circumferential stress is going to act in the opposite direction, and basically, again referring to our diagram, the circumferential stress is going to aim to separate the cylinder in this direction. When we refer to the formula for circumferential stress, we see that the formula is pressure times mean diameter over 2t. Now by inspection, we can see that the circumferential stress is going to be the larger of the two, and in fact it's going to be double the longitudinal stress. But we're going to carry out the calculations anyway, and then we'll have something to compare with our thick walled cylinder theory in the next video. So in the bottom left hand corner, we have some information. First of all, we're told the pressure inside the cylinder is 11.5 megapascals. Now note, if the pressure is inside the cylinder, then that pressure is going to be positive by convention. And if the pressure was on the outside, trying to compress or squash the cylinder, then that pressure would be negative. So by convention, because this pressure is positive, the pressure is inside the cylinder. Now we have some additional data for our cylinder. First of all, we're given an inside diameter of 76 millimeters and an outside diameter of 84 millimeters. Now our mean diameter then is going to be the average of those two. Our mean diameter is going to be 80 millimeters. But let's just construct a quick sketch in order to determine our wall thickness. We have an outside diameter of 84, And we have an inside diameter of 76. So now hopefully you can see from this that our wall thickness must be 4 millimeters because we have 76 millimeters for the inside circle. We need to add 4 millimeters here to bring us up to 80 millimeters, and we need to add 4 millimeters here to bring us up to 84 millimeters. Therefore, our wall thickness T must be 4 millimetres. So effectively, our mean diameter is going to be the diameter to the centre of the wall on either side of our cylinder, like so. OK, now the rule for thin walled cylinder theory to apply states that T divided by D must be less than 0.05. Now, if we check this for our example, we have four millimeters divided by 80 millimeters, which actually comes out as exactly 0.05. Now, the reason I've chosen these values is because by using the boundary between thin walled and thick walled cylinder theory, we can compare those two theories and the stresses we get when we apply each theory. So in this example, we're on the boundary between thin and thick walled cylinder theory. OK, so let's calculate each of our stresses then for comparison. We have a pressure of 11.5 megapascals, or 11.5 times 10 to the 6. We have a mean diameter of 80 millimetres, or 0.08 metres, divided by 4 times the thickness, and the thickness of the wall is 0.004. Running that through the calculator gives us a longitudinal stress equal to 57.5 megapascals. Okay, so next we can calculate our circumferential stress. 
we have the pressure once again, 11.5 times 10 to the 6 for megapascals times the diameter in metres, 0 0.08, this time divided by 2 times the wall thickness. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get a stress equal to 115 megapascals. So as we mentioned previously, our circumferential stress is double our longitudinal stress. Therefore, the principal stress on the cylinder using thin-walled cylinder theory is 115 megapascals. In the next video, we're going to repeat these calculations, except this time we're going to apply thick-walled cylinder theory in order to calculate the longitudinal stress, the circumferential stress on the inside and outside surfaces of the cylinder, as well as something else called the radial stress. And we're also going to calculate the radial stress on the inside and outside surfaces of our cylinder.